Blood pressure targets for critical conditions. Neurological conditions. In subarachnoid hemorrhage cases, hypertension must be managed to prevent re-bleeding episodes. Systolic blood pressure should be maintained between 140 and 160 millimeters of mercury. In cases where intracranial pressure is elevated, mean arterial pressure must be sustained above 80 millimeters of mercury. For spontaneous intracerebral hemorrhage, hypertension management is indicated to minimize re-bleeding risk and hematoma expansion. Systolic blood pressure should be maintained between 140 and 180 millimeters of mercury. When intracranial pressure is elevated, mean arterial pressure must be kept above 80 millimeters of mercury. In acute ischemic stroke management, protocols are differentiated based on tissue plasminogen activator candidacy. For tissue plasminogen activator candidates, Systolic blood pressure must be verified below 185 and diastolic pressure below 110 millimeters of mercury prior to administration. Post-administration, systolic pressure should be maintained below 180 and diastolic below 105 millimeters of mercury for 24 hours. For non-tissue plasminogen activator candidates, intervention is indicated only for severe hypertension. Rapid blood pressure reduction should be avoided due to potential ischemia exacerbation. Enhanced perfusion pressure may be beneficial for penumbral tissue preservation. In hypertensive encephalopathy cases, blood pressure reduction of 20% is indicated within the first hour. For neurological conditions, first-line antihypertensive agents are identified as labetalol and nicardipine. Vasodilators such as nitroglycerin and nitroprusside should be avoided due to their potential to increase cerebral blood volume and intracranial pressure. Trauma management protocols will now be discussed. In hemorrhagic shock, lower blood pressure parameters may be tolerated without specific thresholds being defined. Controlled resuscitation protocols should be prioritized. Excessive fluid administration should be avoided to prevent hemodilution, volume overload, and clot disruption. Additional considerations must be given to elderly patients, those with uncontrolled hypertension, neurogenic shock, or significant head trauma. For neurogenic shock, mean arterial pressure should be maintained above 85 millimeters of mercury to ensure adequate spinal cord perfusion. Early vasopressor initiation should be considered when targets are not achieved with volume resuscitation. In traumatic brain injury management, cerebral perfusion pressure should be maintained between 50 and 60 millimeters of mercury. Age-specific systolic blood pressure targets are established as follows. For patients aged 50 to 69 years, systolic pressure should be maintained above 100 millimeters of mercury. For patients below 50 or above 70 years, systolic pressure should be maintained above 110 millimeters of mercury. When intracranial pressure is elevated, mean arterial pressure must be maintained above 80 millimeters of mercury. In cases of severe hypertension exceeding 200 millimeters of mercury, pain management should be prioritized. Aortic dissection management protocol. Initial pain control should be achieved with fentanyl administration. Heart rate should be maintained below 60 beats per minute, and systolic blood pressure should be reduced below 110 millimeters of mercury to minimize shearing forces. Critical considerations. When multiple therapeutic priorities are identified, Interventions addressing the most immediate life threat should be prioritized. These protocols should be considered as general guidelines and must be modified according to individual patient circumstances. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, Feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.